Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. One of the most popular chart analysts that I follow today says that we're going to see a minimum of $10 for XRP this market cycle, despite everything that's happening with the SEC going after Ripple and all that nonsense. But in all likelihood, he actually thinks it's going to go much higher. And so he's not the first analyst to say things along those lines, but I want to share with you some of the specifics, including... Where are we at in the market cycle right now? Well, what, what I'm seeing from a number of analysts, and I'll highlight at least a few of them in this video uh, regarding Bitcoin, which leads the market, so we must discuss. Uh, we're in a position right now where, where Bitcoin potentially could break up to, uh, to the upside. And so I'll share with you what level the analysts that I follow are saying to watch for, as well as what might potentially invalidate such you know, bullish sentiment, because it's certainly still not out of the cards, potentially, for Bitcoin to tank lower, but uh, perhaps at this point it's looking less likely that uh, that will be the case. And also, you know, with, with with retail money, most of it, I think the most of the retail money that will enter the market cycle, let me say it that way, with most of the retail money that will enter the market cycle, uh, not yet in it yet, uh, what's going to happen? Because, like, I think that most people that speculate in the world of crypto are uh, are going to lose money. I, th I think that, uh, you know, and you can learn from that, too. So I think a lot of the people even that kind of got burnt last market cycle, the ones that stuck around and learned from the mistakes are here and, uh, and doing much better this time by not FOMOing into purchases and, and not panic selling and understanding market cycles. But still, doesn't it make you kind of wonder how many of you out there listening right now are going to sell far too soon missing opportunity for tremendous profits and on the flip side though how many of you are going to miss the top by a, by quite a bit and then uh, and then sell as everything's already crumbling back down and what's the most reasonable way to approach that well look i'm not going to offer financial advice so uh, you know like i don't have a financial background of any kind to be clear so you should not buy or sell anything because of anything i say or write but i'm going to talk about this topic and just share with you my everyday joe schmo opinion on that because to me, there's a simple solution, actually. But uh, let's go ahead and dive in now. XRP, as I record, this is a hair over 46 cents. Bitcoin is at $56,097. And by the way, it did break up to a 24-hour high of $57,215, according to Live CoinWatch. And so, according to uh, multiple analysts, it's not far from the level we'd need to see uh, for, you know, just to invalidate the idea that, uh, at least in the near term, uh, Bitcoin's going to, uh, to to have some sort of additional massive correction, another leg down. Uh, and so here is chart analyst Credible Crypto talking about this. And he wrote uh, to his 131,900 followers on Twitter, he wrote, Overnight, we found support before breaking down the $52,000 region that we needed for confirmation. A wick above the dotted red line officially confirms the invalidation of the bearish count. And so, and by the way, the number, so the, the number he's saying to watch for, and every analyst, even if they pretty well have the same sentiment, they, you know, they, they tend to give you a slightly different number. So I'm just looking for opinions that are strikingly in line with one another from one analyst to another. And I did find that with this analysis. analysis and so what he's saying to look for is this level here. Bitcoin's, uh, I believe this is the all-time high, $58,339. It's right there. It looks like the top of the wick even. So $58,339. You can see how close we've gotten even just today. So if it goes above that, uh, the, the, uh, the the bearish view for as far as uh, credible crypto is concerned, uh, just throw that out. Now, he does go on to cite also that doesn't mean that we're going to be pumping, you know, Bitcoin is going to be pumping straight to seventy or $80,000. And it also doesn't mean that it can't drop again. It just means that we need to you know, take in more data uh, before, uh, before taking on another position. That's effectively what he's getting at. And, um, and, and he cited here too, somebody who's he's blatantly asked, so we can still see $38,000 Bitcoin if we don't break $58,000? And he said, yup, still technically possible. Doesn't mean it will happen, but we we, we will see here. We'll have a much better idea in, in, in the very short term, I, I suspect, here. Um, and then as far as the level to look for, it's interesting to see what analysts think, because you are finding a bunch of analysts that have uh, upped their initial predictions for this market cycle, because there are so many that were saying, yeah, Bitcoin, you know, maybe we'll see it, 89 to 100,000, whatever. And I'm, I've seen a lot of analysts 
uh, bump that up to three hundred thousand dollars. And so some of the some of the analysts that say that they're not necessarily analysts that I follow intensely. Um, I, maybe they're right. Who knows? But here, here's the thing about that. For that to happen, the market structure would have to do more so what it did in 2017. Even the, my fellow XRP YouTuber, and he's a chart analyst, blockchain backer, was citing that. If you want to see Bitcoin go up to that, you'd have to have a structure that looks more like what happened in 2017 in that bull run. But he, he's been citing very artfully that what we're actually seeing is a market cycle that's, yes, quite bullish, but it's mimicking what happened in 2013, and there just isn't anything in the cards to this point to indicate we're actually going to be seeing $300,000 Bitcoin this cycle. Not that it would never necessarily happen. He's just saying that uh, for this cycle. And so as far as Credible Crypto is concerned, uh, he is looking for a little over $100,000. And uh, for those of you that watch the blockchain backer, you know that he's he's always citing that seventy to eighty thousand dollar range. The, the highest I ever heard him cite, I think, was maybe eighty five thousand dollars, and he's not really convinced of that. That's that's how it came across to me anyway. So so we shall see here. Um, and then there was this. This is the this is the money tweet right here. I love this. So uh, Credible Crypto was asked by somebody named Crypto Johnson. Yo, my Cali man, Credible Crypto, what are your XRP price predictions for this cycle? Won't hold you to any number, just interested to see where you think we are heading. And he wrote, so minimum $10, ideally $20 to $30. And um, and so part that bottom prediction, that's actually in line with what uh, the blockchain backer is talking about. But if we actually did end up seeing that $20 to $30 range, whew, I'll tell you what, I would not mind that one bit. Uh, but that's more in line, that upper end anyway, is more in line with what a chart analyst like the like DIY investing has said. But e either way, they seem to all think, yeah, 10, that's easy. And uh, Lub Crypto, who I didn't pull up in this video, I, I cited him a couple times over the last several days, though. Uh, it, same sentiment. And so the number that he cited, I, I'm going from memory here, but I think he said um, $8.50 on the low end. But he actually does think, in line with Credible Crypto here, that you're actually going to see twenty to thirty dollars uh, more likely than not this cycle. And it always seems possible when you're this this far down for something like this to happen. And fine, we we don't know this for sure, and that's why again, I don't know. I'm not offering. I'm not telling you, you know, buy, sell, hold anything. That's why I don't offer financial advice because I I don't know. I don't want to pretend like I'm some sort of guru. That would be so disingenuous. I just like following this stuff, and I'm interested as you are, frankly here. But it's it always seems impossible to hit those levels until you do. Isn't that always what it looks like? When Bitcoin was $3,800 in March of last year, you're like, yeah, but it's going to be like $58,000. Look at this, that. And people would be like, what the hell are you talking about? Shut up. You know, you just you sound ridiculous. But but eventually it does happen. It's like either you believe in the general sense that the market's going to go up or you don't. And if you do believe that the market's going to go up, do you believe that the market moves in tandem? I personally do. And so XRP is moving with Bitcoin, not down to the second, the minute, the day, the weeks, the, the, the month, so on and so forth. Not necessarily, uh, but it's still moving with it. And I'm telling you, just it's, as soon as a candle hits, I mean, it, look, and Incredible Crypto, he's, he's saying the same thing here that I've been saying on this channel for years. So check this out. Somebody asked him uh, in response to that, that tweet about where he thinks XRP price is going. Someone wrote... You still look forward to that, even with all the lag and disinterest from the masses we are seemingly witnessing? Incredible Crypto responded, yup, with a smiley face and wrote, the masses will get interested as soon as we get a couple green candles. So guys, this is such an important point to take home. P the masses are not interested in anything that's cheap. They want to buy stuff once it's expensive, which sounds stupid, and it is stupid, but th this is how humans behave. They get the FOMO, the fear of missing out. That is exactly what we're talking about here. And so that's why for me, when I was citing at the outset, like what's the most reasonable approach to take in terms of maximizing profits here? Well, I'll never offer specific advice because I'm, again, not a financial advisor, but um, I will share with you what I'm doing. And it's not complex. It's, it's simple. So what I've been doing in terms of acquiring my positions, it's nothing more than dollar cost averaging in. And, and not beating myself up for not being able to purchase the bottom of any any particular market uh, market structure. I can't do that. You can't do that. I mean, if you did, it'd be the biggest fluke. It'd be substantially less than 1% of humans that would ever hit that. If you purchase something, there's a very, very high probability that at some point uh, during your time holding it, it's going to be worth less than the moment you purchased it. But if there's a parabolic move, it's not functionally really going to matter anyway, but it's more likely than not, it is going to go down at some point. So that's why, you know, having a long-term mindset and just holding and not getting emotionally involved this stuff to me has, has, has made sense for myself. And so in addition to dollar cost averaging in, what am I going to do on the way up? Well, 
I'm also not going to be able to hit the top of these, these market structures. And so I'll be able to look back when this is all said and done. If I want to be an idiot, I can beat myself up for not being able to sell the top, but that doesn't make logical sense. So instead, what I'm going to do is sell little bits along the way. And, uh, and uh, you know, those bits, maybe they get a little bit bigger as I'm like, okay, this really does seem closer to uh, the top of where I think this thing might get uh, for this market cycle and then maybe increase the sale of it a little bit. But I'm going to make sure that I, uh, just like a dollar cost average in, I slowly sell my position over time. So that way I don't have to, to worry about missing the top. I'll be selling on the way up and... Uh, and if I haven't completely, uh, you know, eliminated my position before the very top, maybe I'll start selling a little bit as it goes on the way back down. And OK, fine, whatever. I'm not going to beat myself up over that. That's what I'm going to do for myself for all of my cryptocurrencies. right? But uh, I just don't want to be one of these people that, you know, uh, sells way too soon, like all of it way too soon or misses the opportunity and sells it way too late. I'd rather have a blend where if you look back, you'd be like, whoa, that Matt, that was messy. You didn't sell a bunch of it anywhere near near the top, really. I'm like, well, OK, fine. But that's my exit strategy, because I think if I don't do that, it'll be even worse because I can't time markets. I'm not capable of it. You're not capable of it. It's just not going to happen. All right. Um, uh, next here. Uh, what was this one? Uh, oh, yeah. So he's talking about a different cryptocurrency called HBAR here. But the sentiment, I, I just wanted to share this with you because it just makes sense to me. And so somebody named Brian uh, was, was in response to a, a tweet from Credible Crypto. He wrote, uh, just wish I'd heeded your advice not to sell any HBAR on the way up. Was too confident in getting that pullback that would let me increase my position. Good stuff as always. To which Credible Crypto responded. It happens, brother. Just learn from it for next time. There's a reason I don't touch my spot holds and only trade with a separate trading account. I have learned the same lessons in the past and did what needed to be done to fix the issue. And so he's publicly tweeted recently, Credible Crypto, with over 130, what did I say? It was 131,900 followers now. In 2017, he was the epitome of your typical retail investor, FOMOing in and panic selling. But he educated himself. And now he's a chart analyst with a massive following, and he's not going to engage in the emotional buying and selling here. And so it's this individual that wrote to him named Brian here, um, I, I understand nothing against him whatsoever, uh, it, but I can understand the pain. Like if you sold a massive quantity or all of a position, that's the point I want to get to. That's that's where people end up having regrets right there. If it's too way too soon or way too late, which is why for me, uh, what I'm just going to do is as things go up, I'll, I'll start selling little bits along the way. I'm, I'm not there yet, but I, I plan to do it, and I'll be happy to share with you some of that information. I'll, I'll, I'll be transparent to a certain degree. I just don't want to share how much crypto I hold. To me, that's, first of all, doing that, I think it's dangerous, and then if it becomes a lot, then it just sounds kind of douchey. So, you know, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know, it's, that is not Moonlambo style. I'm just saying here. All right, and then also he cited here that he thinks that this market cycle will probably more or less just go another six months or so. And I know it feels like we're just getting heated up here, but frankly, the blockchain backers been saying the same thing in his recent videos too is like yes i know it's like how could it already be getting that point well i, I don't know we've been seeing fireworks for for like how long now look we're already in march i mean for like the last quarter of 2020 things were really starting to get hot so you're already talking about a six month period so if you're talking about another six months out if, if credible crypto and the blockchain backer are more or less correct on their timelines which are kind of similar to be honest uh, you know Maybe maybe it's all going to be over by the end of this year. So we'll see. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if they're right about this. Um, and here's a tweet from the blockchain backer. Bitcoin touched $57,000. Today's video is a lot of me just rambling, but the message I'm trying to portray is that it's time to start getting mentally prepared. I anticipate euphoria for everything is coming. All the preparation and planning, all the waiting is for this. And indeed, we're about to hit this because... For those of you that were here in 2017, it's going to feel just like home when we get there again. I'm sure so many of you that were around, I know what I'm talking about. For you, you people that aren't, you you just, you have no idea, like, <laughs> until you're like, until you've lived through, like, you have no idea what is about to happen here. Every single large and mid-cap coin that was around back for the last market cycle went parabolic. Every single one, there was not an exception. Meaning, you could have invested in any larger mid-cap coin, and if you if you did it before the rally started, before if you know, say you're a person that wasn't chasing green candles, then you you made out like crazy unless you held on too long or sold too soon. 
you know, which is what I was just talking about a moment ago. But all of them went up. We haven't seen the beginning of that yet. And so that's why it's so interesting watching this Bitcoin price level, because if we do break above these levels that a blockchain backers talk about, incredible crypto, and another one I'm going to pull up in just a second, another very popular analyst uh, says the level he's watching for, you know, once you hit that, uh, <laughs> even if you have another bit of a pullback or this, that, because nothing goes up in a straight line, at some point you're going to see these altcoins popping off independent of Bitcoin, and that will be the indication that the really serious part of alt season is really here. And so arguably we're already in an alt season, many, many would say that. You know, and it's all subjective. It's like, what's the litmus test? You know, <laughs> is there an organization out there that have to meet certain criteria for it to be called an alt season? You know what? No, <laughs> it's not how it's, so it's kind of subjective. Uh, but many would argue we're, we're in an alt season right now, but we haven't really seen the craziness yet. There's so many cryptocurrencies out there that are way down from their previous all time highs. And so you think even if they just got back to that, for many of them, you're talking about an eight or tenfold increase. But are they going to stop there? Wouldn't you think for this market cycle, a lot of them would smash through that? I'd be willing to guess for fun that that would be the case. We'll see how it goes. Uh, I would I would certainly be surprised if that did not happen here. Uh, and, and so it's it's just it's dependent on Bitcoin to this point. But uh, he's he's he, even blockchain backer here. He's, he's he's been effectively saying some very similar things like the, the likes of credible crypto. And so here's another analyst, a very popular analyst named Josh Rager, who has 117,500 followers now, and he wrote the following about Bitcoin. Here we are, retest the previous high on the daily close, looking for price to close above $57,500, then make a move to new highs from there. We can certainly see some sellers step in here, but with multiple retests, sellers can certainly run out and bulls will continue up. And so just think about that. That caught my attention because it's not that different from what Credible Crypto was saying. Fine, Credible Crypto was saying more like 58000 and change, whatever. Watch for that level. And Josh Rader says, okay, I close above 57.5, but we're splitting hairs here, guys. We're splitting hairs here. The point is you get to, the, to roughly around that level and it's like level is like going to take off. And, and, and even if it doesn't happen instantly, still the idea that we're going to have another leg down. I mean, it's, it's pretty well invalidated at that point. I, 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 that's what I'm seeing from analysts. That, that's what I keep seeing. So we're getting closer to a point where we can say that pullback actually isn't going to happen. So the, you know, the two drop downs that we saw over the last week and a half or however long it's been at this point, it may be the case. That's all we get, which is why I said, look, there's no way to know for sure if it's going to go lower. So I said, look, I got a, I got USD on the sideline in case uh, it does drop further. But I did take advantage of both of those uh, of those dips and I purchased a number of different cryptocurrencies and I'm glad I did because maybe it won't go back down. If it does though, I will be thrilled. I'm not going to be scared if it dips down because the macro trend for this cycle is in place even if you see another leg down. I'm not worried about it. At least that's what the analysts that I follow are saying. So uh, I, I'm, I'm sleeping easy guys. I'm feeling great about all of this. And here's a tweet from chart analyst DIY investing. People think making money in crypto is hard, but that's actually the easy part. Try holding a crypto after you've already made 20x off of it without selling. And he writes, I didn't join for the 1x, 3x, or 5x returns. I joined for the 10x, 100x, and 1000x returns, which is worth bringing up. Now, as far as at this point in the market cycle, though, with the, 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 the mid and large cap coins, uh, we might be too far along for that. So maybe he's talking about smaller, smaller cap coins. That would make a ton of sense. And uh, even regardless, though, I wanted to share with it, this with you because the like the the idea behind it resonates with me, and it was in line with my thinking just in a general sense about how many people are going to either sell too soon or sell too late, and that's that's just that's just sad. I, I remember seeing one XRP community member who, who uh, will remain unnamed, even though he publicly tweeted this out. You know, he said at the peak for him. Uh, last market cycle, he had, I think he said something like $660,000 in crypto. And uh, he, he was hoping and thinking it was just going to keep going up and up and up and up. And he lost the vast majority of it. And so he did sell some of it. I know he made over, he said he made over $100,000. And so this is assuming he's being a truthful individual anyway. But, I don't, I, you know, if something bad like that happens, I'm going to assume it's more likely than not, you know, the truth, you know. Uh, but I think that's ha going to happen to a ton of people. And that's why for me, I'm just going to just reduce my exposure to crypto as prices creep up. And then I'm not going to beat myself up for not hitting the top and I'm going to sleep easy. It's going to be perfectly fine. You know, I just don't want to be the one that sells way too soon or way too late. And so for me, reducing my exposure over time makes a ton of sense. So that's what I personally will do. And DIY Investing also wrote, The harsh reality is most of you won't make any money this bull run because you will lose it back to the market when we flip bearish. 
As much as I don't want that to happen, it's what always happens every cycle. Perfectly in line with what I was saying earlier in this video. Most people investing in crypto, especially if they're new, they're going to lose money. They're going to get totally wrecked by this market because they're going to FOMO in. They're going to panic sell. They don't have the experience. They don't understand market cycles. And it's the most volatile, risky asset class on the entire, uh, on the entire planet. It's like, you're playing with fire here. You better make sure that you've educated yourself or you can absolutely lose everything. So just be super duper careful about what you're doing here. Uh, but just in a general sense... Yeah, you know, if people are in a euphoric state and prices have gone up, that's usually a bad time to purchase. It's just whether it's a stock market or crypto, usually historically, that's a really a bad idea. And when things are tanking on the way back down, you know, like that's historically been a very good time to purchase. Like when you, when Bitcoin was a uh, you know three or four thousand dollars in March last year, that was a really good time to buy. You know, it's damn near sixty thousand dollars now. It almost hit that. And, it, and I believe it will go past that. And so at this point, I'm not interested in purchasing Bitcoin because, you know, I, it probably is through most of its bull action for this market cycle. But there's so many altcoins out there that are just ridiculously undervalued compared to at least compared to, you know, where their, their previous all time highs were. So uh, I look the parties. It, it's, it's like just getting started now. So just wait. I, pr I personally believe that XRP will be a part of it. Uh, if it's just like last market cycle, every single mid and large cap coin, including XRP, will have its time in the sun. So I'm just going to sit here and wait. What a hell of a ride it's been so far. But again, the truly most exciting, ridiculous phase of all this is not here yet. And it's going to be, I'll tell you what, it's going to be fun when the inevitable happens. And this is just my unprofessional opinion, fine, whatever. But when XRP rallies, and it hits its previous all-time high and then keeps on a chugging. And it melts a bunch of faces and there's like face goo all over the pavement and it's disgusting. It looks like little vomit piles, but upon closer inspection, like, oh no, that's not a vomit pile. That's just some face goo. Uh, it must have been some XRP that melted the face here. Uh, when that happens, and then all of the Bitcoin maxi trolls and the haters, like, <laughs> it's going to be, they're going to be silent. Uh, it, it's it's, it's going to be a fun day. Um, but they will get noisy again, just as the whole market tanks. So XRP will retrace if it's like last market cycle, expect it to drop another 80 to 90 percent from whatever its all time high is, uh, which would be normal. That's what Bitcoin has done. Uh, then they'll get noisy again. Haha, look at XRP. And I'm like, holy hell, did you not just see that it participated with the rest of the market cycle, which you said wasn't going to happen? Because it's going to be a see, I told you so moment when this happens, which uh, it, 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 fine, no guarantees, but uh, that it'll happen. But I personally believe it will. And so I'm just going to patiently wait. That is it. But I'll wrap up there. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Lambo.